Hi everyone, uh, we're back at SunnyCon 2017 and we're here with uh, James Katakafka and Michelle Knox. Uh, people Hi. will probably recognise them from Pokemon. Yeah, well they probably don't recognise us, but maybe they <laughs> They'll recognise your voices, I think. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I certainly don't look like who comes, uh, who I voice. <laughs> that's for sure. So, who do you voice in Pokemon? Me? I voice um, James and Meowth mostly in the show. I started in episode one as doing the voice of Gary Oak, who's still around, but he's a researcher and he and Ash are good friends, so it's like, goodbye! <laughs> and I also do Professor Oak and a bunch of other characters that I can't think of right now, but that's okay. But Meowth and James are my best friends. <laughs> uh, I voice Jesse. Um, I voiced May for seasons nine and through Diamond and Pearl when Dawn showed up when she was wearing the little green bandana. Um, I voiced Nurse Joy for seasons nine through thirteen. Um, yeah, and I'm still voicing Jesse today. And, and a slew of Pokemon. I was going to say a plethora, a, we're, but we're a, a slew, good. slew, a yeah. slew of Pokemon yeah. like Manaphy and Piplup and Gardevoir, Dustog, Skagnia, Latios, Latias. Yeah, there are like 700 and, uh, 70 Pokemon now. We do a lot of them, which yeah. is fun. So the two of you are effectively the entirety of Team Rocket. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's right. We're all three. <laughs> yes. You probably get tired of people asking you to do the lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're kind of not. Are we? Yes. They, <laughs> what do you think? So it's it's a toss up. We don't know. You know, sometimes we're. They say we'd, we'd rather you not do it, but. Uh, We've done it. <laughs> right. What I guess do? it all depends if we get in trouble for it or not. Yeah, we, we don't want to get in trouble. It's like that old holdover from second grade. Are we gonna, uh, is teacher going to get mad at us? Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, how did you guys get in? Like that pause? <laughs> that was a pause. That was pause. Like, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. That's nice. Don't worry. So, how did you get into voice acting? Do you want me to go first? Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Well, I was a theater major in college. And I switched majors and schools, I, and then I went into radio and television broadcasting. I actually come from news, which is really weird, because my personality doesn't really go with news. I don't like to be serious. I'm just <laughs> but I saw that. Do Fox News. Yeah. Oh no, no Please. Fox. <laughs> I stay far, far away. No, I worked at actually MSNBC for a little uh -huh. bit. So, which is way different than Fox News. Um, I don't know if you know that it's like a CNN sort of because I don't yeah. know if you know MSNBC. Oh, we get it here. here. Well. Oh, you get it here. Oh, okay, great, great. So uh, I worked there for a little bit because they're actually in New Jersey where I live. Like we work in New York, but live in New Jersey because it's easier and cheaper to live there. <laughs> but um, yeah, I actually I actually come from news, which is which is weird, and I didn't want to do it anymore because it was like too real for me and too much, you know, fire, death, and destruction. I'm like, oh, I want to get out of that. <laughs> So, and Brian Williams is a jerk. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. Here he comes. Now he's gonna come and like attack me. Tell lies about you. <laughs> Tell lies about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't name me. <laughs> so uh, it's funny. Uh, it was 2003 at the Big Apple Anime Fest at the Marriott in New York City in Manhattan. And they're, they were having a contest, they were like, win a role in an anime! So I went and I won, which was so cool. I couldn't believe, because there were so many other talented people there. So, because we had to do like a monologue and match to lip flap and things like that. And that was really fun. So I won my first role as Hajime Yagi in the world of Naraway. That was, that's a fun little uh, 12, 13 episode. And that's where I actually, this is, this is a good segue into <laughs> How I met Carter, well, James, James Carter. We call yeah. him Carter. Carter's fine. <laughs> Back in the States. But, um, yeah, so he was Maruo in the world of Norway, and that's how I got to meet him, which was really cool, so. My last session with Tom for that show, as I was leaving, it was in Brooklyn, remember that? In Brooklyn, place? yeah, yeah. <laughs> as I was leaving, Michelle was just coming in, so that's when we first met. I was like, oh, hi. Yeah, so. I was a big, I was a big fan of uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena. Where I was in that show. James I was voices Mickey, Mickey the in piano that. player. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Let's see. <laughs> yes, I was Mickey, the piano player. Very gentle and emotional and sensitive, like me. <laughs> so, 
Uh, let's see. So that segues <laughs> to you. It's like, that's how I met you. And it <laughs> My stock and trade has been as a musician. I was in bands for years. I was in a group called The Laughing Dogs. We were on live at CBGB's. We did two albums for CBS. I played with Dave Brubeck. I played with Jerry Mulligan. I played with a lot of different jazz guys. So in the 80s, I had a recording studio. And in the early 90s, I did the theme package for a show called the ABC Weekend Special, whose host was a cartoon cat named O.G. Readmore. And while I was doing the music, they asked me, we'd like to uh, change the voice, and do you know anybody that could do it? And I always wanted to do voice, and I said, yeah, me. <laughs> so I got the voice of O.G. Readmore, and that turned out to be great because he was the spokes cat for Project Literacy for five years. So I got to do all these PSAs and, and was out there telling kids to read, and he talked like this, and it was lovely, and I had a great time, eh, what? So... <laughs> Then in 1997, is that when Pokemon started? I think it was 97 or maybe 98. Um, we heard about this show and I had a friend who was going to be doing the dubbing and I auditioned for the part of Gary Oak and so I was there from season one on and I've been there ever since and now I voice James and Meowth and I'm also the English scriptwriter for Pokemon which is my main stock and trade now. But I still play piano two to four hours a day and gig as much as I can. So that I divide my time. So, uh, what do you see for yourselves in the future? Is it always going to be Pokemon, or <laughs> do you want to branch out into lots of? That other depends things? on Japan, right? <laughs> I want to branch out into death. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I love Pokemon. You know, you just now. I mean, season 20. Believe me, nobody thought. I mean, not because it wasn't a good show, but. Who could imagine 20 years ago that we would still be doing the show and it would be doing so well? And but there, there's a new generation of kids that loves the the Pokemon, the animals. I mean, I think the critters are what they love about it, and yeah. so I'm just really grateful that it keeps on going. And as long as they want me to show up, I'm happy to do it because it's a lot of fun. It really, is a lot of fun. It's a lovely show for uh, kids and. And when I meet people that remember Gary Oak that are in their 20s, and I can call them a loser, and say all that kind of stuff, and they love it, I mean, I'm happy. I mean, this, I've called more people losers in the last couple of days. And it's fun, but I don't really mean it. I'm just being Gary. You know? But you could call them losers and mean it, and they wouldn't know. They would, yeah, they wouldn't even know it. That's true, but I don't mean loser. I'm just kidding. Sorry. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... I'm still doing voice acting. Um, the latest thing that came out, uh, I don't know if you guys know Smite, uh, it's kind of like a League of Legends. Yes. So it's an online, uh, you know, fighting game. So I voiced the Sparrow Nike and that. She's really cool. She was a lot of fun. So I'm still auditioning for anything I can and working on any kind of voiceover. So I want to do this for the rest of my life until I die. Yeah. Not even, yeah. I was going to say retire, but I'm like, you know what? I, I don't want to retire because I love doing this so much. I know. I just want to just keep, keep going, keep going. I don't think <laughs> retirement, I mean, my parents' generation, there was retirement. Yeah. No more. There's yeah, no that's retirement. true. <laughs> no, no, there's no retirement work for it. It's great. It's great so, <laughs> is there any kind of special training that you have to do to be a voice actor? I had a voice coach. Uh, well, I was a theater major. I studied a lot of theater, but when I wanted to pursue voice acting, like when I, I got that role and worked on it, I asked people, you know, like like James and everyone, like, how do you do this? I, I want to do this, because all I knew was how you try to get into theater. You want to be on Broadway, you know, you want to be a star on Broadway. Um, so I, I got a voice coach, and she helped me out a lot, and I made a demo, and um, yeah, I did training with her, and uh, you know, th that's like how I just got the ball rolling and everything started. I'm like, I, I want to do this. I don't just want to do this one thing and then walk away from it. You know, I want to I want to keep pursuing it. So I I worked my butt off <laughs> to, to try and get where I am today. So. Yeah. I've not had a voice coach, but I grew up with Bugs Bunny. I mean, every night it was Bugs Bunny, it was Quick Draw McGraw, it was Yogi Bear, um, Rocky and Bullwinkle, and I have a big mouth. And so I'm a singer as well. So I was always doing voices. Just And then when it... Uh, when it, I got to be in my 20s, I just started to think more consciously about the voices that I liked and the tones that I liked. And then when the OG Readmore thing came around, it just it kind of coalesced everything. So um, no formal training, but I did. You had a singing coach. 
No, I never had one. Really? Never, you never had a singing coach? No, I never yeah. did, no. But I certainly took enough piano lessons to fill up life. Yeah, piano and then stuff. <laughs> right. But I just think I got more serious about it, though. You know, recognize what was a, a strong point and a weak point. Like, I'm not a floor rattler. I don't, or I can't do that. I wish I could. <laughs> but I can be up here! And I like to be up here! So, that's where I am. So, what kind of, uh, what kind of advice would you give to anybody who wants to become a voice actor? I'm not sure what the voice acting industry is like in the UK. Um, <laughs> I should really system. research that because I, I honestly I have no idea for here. Um, in the in the states, the the best thing to have like your resume is a demo. Um, you want a demo of of your voice, obviously. Like if you're a musician, you know, and you want to you know sign with a record <laughs> label or so. You need you need you know examples. Demos. Of, you need demos of your voice, if you can sing, if, right. you know, can you play an instrument, you know, what kind, are, you, are you in a band, and the band makes their, you know, records their songs and mails it out all over the place. So it's the same with your voice. So uh, I always, I've been telling them, you know, to have like a minute of commercials and a minute of characters because they'll only listen to like 15, 20 seconds of it and then like, oh, this is awesome, or throw it out, really. <laughs> so I always say just 60 seconds, that's it, of commercials, which is like your normal voice, or characters, like whatever characters you can do, like the hero or the princess or the evil demon or the golem character, or, you know, things like that. Yes. <laughs> well, I always, like I said, was starting about concentrating on the things that I, I felt I could do easily and that I like to do, because there are a lot of voice things that I wouldn't be interested at all in doing. But I think it's, for me anyway, it's most important to do something you really like and then, of course, you want to find the proper channels, but not to worry about so much where it ends up. Because um, my first uh, commercial voiceover, it was a Kit Kat commercial, and it was um, the, one of the first times where they had the give me a break, give me. So I went and did an audition, and it was the exterior of a movie theater with the spotlights. And all I said was, and this was the audition, ladies and gentlemen, Kit Kat break time. <laughs> and I walked out and I went, well, that was an interesting waste. Of and I got the job, and they used <laughs> the demo. And so for the next year, I heard it everywhere, and they were very generous. That's awesome. <laughs> so it was kind of like I didn't know that, but. Putting it out there and, and, and trying as many different things as you can, um, I think that's the key. <coughs> for me it was. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank, Thank you. you, it's Thanks a pleasure. For having us. Thanks, Thank everybody. Bye. <laughs>